export. Scene one, take one. Mark. Oh, ah. ah. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Bill and I here once again to answer your science questions. This is Science Support, part three. Uh, James Ravel asks, how come we know more about space than we do about our own ocean? I heard that on a dock somewhere. Well, if you heard it on a documentary, James, I guess you're set. No, okay, there's an old saying that it's easier to explore the moon than the bottom of the ocean, and that's true for three reasons. The ocean is cold, it's crushing, and it's corrosive. That's why. It's easier with binoculars to explore the moon than it is with a scuba mask from a department store and to st observe the bottom of the ocean. Carry on, James. David Blanchflower, BSC, he asks, now that tardigrades have settled on the moon, I wonder what their future holds. Will they successfully rehydrate? Can they flourish in thousands of years? Will they build spaceships and return to Earth? Fascinating. Oh, there's a picture. He's got a picture of a tardigrade. Tardigrade's also called the water bear. You can see him with your naked eye. He said naked, oh my God. The word settled. I think crash landing in the harsh vacuum of space on a planetary body that has no atmosphere or liquid water, I think that's not the same as settling. I don't think they're gonna settle the moon, David. Carry on. Bill Nye, assuming a perfect scenario where the general disasters don't occur, if the Earth stops spinning, would we all feel dizzy? I guess so. Not a test you'll probably be able to run. Tony Phillips uh, writes a climate change question. As it gets hotter, more air conditioning is used, heating up the air even more. Is there a way to cool indoor spaces without heating up the outdoors, especially in cities? Well, Tony, probably not, because what is the one thing you can count on in this universe? That's right, Tony, the second law of thermodynamics. Heat just spreads out, man. So when you pump the heat out of this room or the room you're sitting in, putting it outside, uh, the outside gets a little bit warmer, but the scale of it, I hope, surprises you. The amount of heat we pump out of buildings ain't no nothing compared to the, with the amount of heat that we're holding in by adding greenhouse gases to the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, the heat island effect of cities is, is more from uh, hardscape, paved surfaces. Uh, buildings are not soil, for example, and that's why cities are so hot. The AC thing is a problem, but it's just the hardscape that gets us. And that flippin' second law of thermodynamics. I'm sorry, well, man, there's nothing we can do out there. We got a deal. It's entropy, entropy killing us all. Hollow writes, when will teleportation happen? <laughs> I don't know. Happens all the time in science fiction, but that's fiction. No, just the information problem alone probably makes teleportation impossible. Converting something like you into a beam of electromagnetic signals, it's very, very unlikely. Just taking you apart and putting you back together would take extraordinary amounts of energy. Alyssa asks, honestly, I have a science degree and a partially completed doctorate and I still have no idea what a neutron does. Okay. Neutrons give, make things massive, man. And if you can fuse them together, you can release a whole bunch of energy, which we hope is the future. Liam asks, if the mantle is filled with lava, why aren't the oceans boiling? Or at least warmer than they are? There's a couple things. First of all, that the oceans are not boiling and the earth remains very warm inside is evidence of an aphorism I hope you will embrace, a, a saying, a, a way of looking at the world that I hope you, Liam, will take to heart. If things were any other way, things would be different. And here's what we mean by that. Indeed, the earth does radiate a large amount, but relatively small amount of heat into the icy blackness of space. The bottom of the ocean is the Earth's crust. You gotta go down another 10, 20, 30 kilometers most places to get to the mantle. Carry on, Liam. Bill Nye, if aliens were to fly by light years away, would they see the dinosaurs of the Trojan War or something since light they see is so old? Yes, they would, Sperky. Bill Nye, this is Drew asks, Bill Nye, why does the moon reflect in one straight line when it hits the ocean? It may interest you to know that it reflects in all different directions when it hits the ocean. Just you as the observer see a straight line. And if you don't believe me, get your friends to stand in a line along the beach where you can call out to each other and ask each other if you each see a straight line. 
And then ask yourself if they're parallel. Or if you don't trust your friends, and I don't blame you, set up cameras. Take pictures along a kilometer or two. Carry on, Drew. Andrew Ralston says, okay, okay, I'll say it, I'll say it. How do planes work? And I presume by that, Andrew, you mean airplanes. Because a carpenter's plane uh, has a blade and you push it along, the carpenter pushes it along and it peels up the wood. But an airplane works like a bird. You get the momentum of air molecules going down uh, hasn't produces enough force to hold the wing up. And the way you get air molecules going down is get the wing going fast. What about a helicopter? A helicopter is wings that are spinning. And the propeller blades, either the exposed ones that you might see on what we would call a propeller aircraft, or the uh, turbine blades inside the tubes on a jet airplane, are they're going around in a circle and they're pushing air molecules back so fast that they push the airplane forward. It's not magic, it's science! Goji Rasans asks, I'm doing my best to pronounce your name, Goji Rasans. Bill Nye, if we took all the animals out of the ocean, how much shallower do you think the ocean would get? In other words, how much water do you think animals displace? I'll bet it's less than you think. Animals like you and I are mostly water. Animals that live in the ocean are almost all water. I don't think it would change that much. Since you asked, how much do you think? My answer is, not much. Carry on, Goji Rossens. Drew asks, Bill Nye, do you think aliens actually exist? So you want me to resist making a joke about my old boss? <laughs> I don't know if he was an alien. <laughs> <clears throat> there are 200 billion stars in our galaxy, and there are at least that many galaxies. When I was in school, it was speculated that there might be a planet, a single planet, around one in every hundred stars. Now, with observations from Hubble Space Telescope, Kepler Space Telescope, other inferential methods, people think there are probably about 10 planets around every star. So that's another factor of a thousand. That takes you into the two trillions in just our galaxy. If you got two trillion of anything, you gotta figure something's gonna happen. So there probably are aliens. Do they sit around and do fabulous and important Twitter-style podcasts? I don't know. Maybe. Carry on. Heroic Enrique, because he says the H is, or she says the H is silent. Are you an alien, Bill? Sent here to educate the human race and save us from our own destruction? Yes. I'm an alien. I've been, I've been sent here like the landing party that that one astronaut claims he believes in. No, I'm not an I'm one of you. I'm one of us. We're all in this together. Link shall kill 89. Bill Nye, how does fusion work? Do you think we'll be able to have fusion power plants where we use nuclear power plants for 2050? Fusion works by overcoming what's called the strong nuclear force or the strong nuclear interaction. And I believe it is quite reasonable we will have fusion, not by running a stream of protons into deuterium or tritium, oh no, but by running a stream of neutrons into boron hydride gas. Stay tuned. Casey Kooning writes, Bill Nye, I've been fascinated and quite obsessed, parenthetically, with the alternate parallel universe theory. Oh, you know that theory, that theory about the alternate parallel universe. So my question is this, if such a thing were exist, would the laws of physics necessarily have to apply to every single universe? Well, so here's the thing, Casey, let's, let's just take history of physics, for example. People got by, they built pyramids, they built, they discovered round things roll, made wheels. All kinds of uh, agriculture was developed without really formalizing uh, the laws or rules of physics or natural laws. And so people presumed that the, the new, what we call Newton's laws of motion were it for centuries. And it was great, we made all sorts of progress. But then relativity was discovered, and then quantum electrodynamics, and we refined the laws of physics. People, when you're a sophomoric view of uh, the world, oh, Isaac Newton was wrong. Isaac Newton was pretty flippin' right. But then as we made more discoveries about the nature of mass and light and quantum electrodynamics, we refined it. So I presume if another universe 
exists and it has what we might call different laws of physics, it doesn't mean that our laws of physics are necessarily wrong. It just means they're incomplete. Every day we learn a little more. Carry on, KC. Brian Schmidt asks, didn't I hear we could get to the next habitable planet in a few years with this space sail? Just need a sail the size of Texas in order to do it. Sail the size of Texas is not going to take us to another habitable planet in a few years. But solar sails, such as Light Sail 2, may revolutionize uh, space exploration here in the solar system because we can go to extraordinary speeds with no rocket fuel. There are certain missions that solar sails are ideal for. Put a um, solar sail spacecraft at an inferior orbit closer to the sun than the Earth is and keep an eye out for asteroids or maybe more importantly, importantly coronal mass ejections from the sun which send a beam of charged particles slashing through space toward the Earth which could disable many, many of our communication systems. So there are certain missions that solar sails are ideal for, but a Texas-sized one going to a nearby habitable planet is probably not among them. And I remind you that it's not the solar wind, it's not particles streaming from the sun that give a solar sail spacecraft a push. It is the light itself, photons. There's about 100 times more pressure from photons than charged particles. Fascinating, I hope. Carry on, Brian. Bill Nye, do insects feel gravity the same way we do? Yes. A Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. Of course, spiders aren't insects. But he doesn't do it because his understanding of gravity is different. He does it because, because he's not real. Thank you for your questions. We'll be back with more science support number four coming soon. And when it does, turn it up loud.